So here we're going to look at the distinctive structure and function of the nephron, which is located in the kidney. And there are many, over a million, nephrons per each kidney, which is important for the filtration of blood. So looking at that blood in the kidney, well, how's it going through? Well, we have this intense network of capillaries, and we have our veins and our arteries here surrounding um, our nephron. These nephrons here are allowing a lot of nutrients and water and ions to be exchanged, and that's how we see some of these blood vessels surrounding each one of these. Each nephron has this very distinctive structure, and we're going to go over the details of that. So looking at the nephrons, they're the functioning units of the kidney. They cleanse the blood and balance the constitutes for circulation. They're constantly filtering out the blood. They take simple filtrated blood and modify it ultimately into forming urine. As I said, there's 1.3 million nephrons per each kidney that you have. So that blood flow, we have these intense capillary beds. We have our arteries and our veins going through our venules. Um, but we see all these little blood vessels surrounding kind of this kind of looks like a bunch of tubes kind of folding on one another. This is important because we have a lot of exchanges occurring at these distinctive sections. Ultimately, we're producing um, urine at the very end, and that will be excreted from the body. The anatomy of the nephron here, giving a nice quick summary. The glomerulus is filters um, small solutes from the blood. That then leads to the proximal convoluted tubule, the PCT, where ions can be reabsorbed, water can be reabsorbed, but also nutrients. Toxins will be removed and will adjust to filtrate pH to maintain our proper homeostasis. Continuing on, we see it kind of bends around the corner, comes around here. We have the descending loop of Henle. Aquaporins allow water to pass from the filtrate into the interstitial fluid. In contrast, we do a 180 degree hairpin turn coming back up the ascending loop where we're reabsorbing sodium ions and chloride ions from the filtrate to the interstitial fluid. That's leading to the distal tubule, which is selectively secreting and absorbing different ions to maintain blood pH and electrolyte balance. This is part of that homeostasis. So we don't know if we're secreting or absorbing. It depends on the constraints or the stresses on the body. Ultimately, it leads to the collecting duct, which reabsorbs solutes in water to form the filtrate. Now, the physiology of the nephron. We're seeing this um, arterioles, and we see these veins. We see this filtration that's occurring in the Bowman capsule. Glomerous capillaries located here. We have filtration, reabsorption, secretion, ultimately um, excretion in the form of urine in the body. This gives you a little bit of an idea of the complexity of what's going on with each neuron, um, nephron, I'm sorry. And we notice that there's different ions that's occurring here. Now, these ions are either coming in, they could be going out. And this is helping the body maintain homeostasis. So these nephrons need to be in direct contact with the blood. Now, this might seem a little complex right now. I will admit it's not the easiest to follow, at least initially, but I provide this with you at the end. What I want to draw your attention to at this point is we have these distinctive sections here. The filtration step, we have the PCT, the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal, and the collecting duct. We're going to go over these each in detail. An image that's probably a little less uh, scary here, uh, showing you the same region and stretching out that nephron a little bit. So we have that filtration, that selective reabsorption, the osmoregulation and salt gradient, selective reabsorption, and then water retention at the very end. Again, this is a little stretched out to kind of give you the idea of what it looks like. It is much more condensed because you're trying to fit 1.3 million in each kidney. So starting with the glomerulus, the only place where actually filtration occurs. Blood pressure is used to push plasma through the capillary walls to the Bowman's capsule here. So this is our actual point of filtration. The glomerulus is in red and the Bowman's capsule here is in tan. We're forcing that blood plasma across causing that kind of physical type of filtration to occur. That then leads to the PCT, or proximal convoluted tubule, where our nutrients and our salts, some vitamins and water can be moved out of the tubule through active transport, so this does require energy. However, for water, we're not using that through active transport, that occurs by osmosis. We can also reabsorb substances, sodium, some nutrients, urea, lipid soluble solids, and small proteins in our proximal tubule. Continuing on, we have our loop of Henle. Just remember, there's two parts to this. Uh, it consists of both the descending, which is important for water flow, 
and in A setting, which is a transfer loop of ions. We see that here. Here's our sodium and chloride ions. Tissues around the loop of Henle is salty from active transport and diffusion of these chloride ions. The salty conditions allow water to diffuse out of the loop. So this is, we're creating that water and that ions and through the process of osmosis and regulation, this is how we're having that water move across. Active transport is moving the ions and osmosis is moving the water. Continuing on to the distal tubule here, it selectively secretes or absorbs ions to maintain blood pH and electrolyte balance. This is that homeostasis coming in. So we can kind of absorb or secrete them depending on what the body needs. Active transport is used to move these nutrients out of the concentrated urine. We're slowly getting very close to producing our end product, which is urine. Some ions, drugs, and toxins are actively pumped into the tubule for excretion out the body. You see this um, active transport pictured here. Again, that's requiring ATP. Continuing on, that collecting duct, more water leaves the tubule by osmosis since the tube is surrounded by salty tissue. So that salty tissue is driving that moving water, and that water is going to move in that direction. Some urea also leaves by diffusion, but it may be cycled through the system. And urea is less toxic than ammonia. So again, here's that kind of simple structure of the nephron. Looking at the Bozeman's castle, the proximal tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal tubule, and the collecting duct. Lastly, to end with, that little bit more complex image that hopefully you can kind of get an appreciation for of all the different things occurring at the different steps and where things might be moving in or moving out to help the body maintain homeostasis and ultimately produce urine and concentrate waste products so they'll be excreted from the body.